fit, formidable, and fantastic. Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode. Well, it finally happened. I recently broke 4,000 subscribers, and per usual, to celebrate uh, growing by another thousand, I'm doing another Q&A. I will likely do this once more when I reach 5,000, but after that, I'll probably celebrate every 5,000 um, subscribers that I earn, uh, and I guess we'll see how it goes, um, or rather, how fast it goes. So, let's get cracking. Question one. Would you consider unethical eating an egg that is unfertilized and left by any bird in the woods. A pure ethical perspective. I don't see anything wrong with it. Whether the bird abandoned this theoretical egg or not, and all you can really do is assume in this situation, because what if the egg is fertilized, or possibly displaced, and or the mother was killed or is injured somewhere? Whatever the case, consuming an egg isn't vegan, and that egg was not created for your consumption. Health ramifications aside. Next question. How many pull-ups can you do in one set? It depends on when I do them and how, and this goes for dips and push-ups as well. For instance, earlier in a workout, I can get more than I could later in a workout, and um, which after I am properly fatigued, that is. And, um, well, that being said, I haven't done pure body weight uh, pull-ups in ages, actually. I tend to hang weight plates from a belt to keep to the 10 to 12 rep range, sometimes as few as 6 reps, depending on how heavy I aim to go. My back has always responded very well to the 6 to 10, possibly up to 12 rep range, but generally between 6 and 10 it responds very well. Uh, weighted pull-ups are a staple in my routine, uh, just as um, parallel grip an underhand grip, chins, or pull-downs are. Um, in fact, a couple of weeks back, I had a girl in Whole Foods actually comment on how wide my, my back is. Uh, she herself looked like a fitness type, so she was likely Myron. And uh, I attribute my consistency with pull-ups and varied grip pull-downs to my current width. But I also row. I want to point that out there. No back routine is complete without some rowing involved as well. I usually do two pull-up or pull-down movements and two rowing movements in a given back day. Here's an example of a typical back session I might perform, and I love to work back with chest. The metabolic response and upper body pump are absolutely insane with that pairing. Next question. Best tips to burn leg fat. You cannot spot reduce. Period. Legs, abs, arms, ass, wherever. It doesn't matter. You can't spot reduce. But don't just take my word for it. They've actually done studies on this. Which show that while overall fat mass decreases, there is no greater localized fat loss in specifically targeted areas. So I could care less what someone's anecdote demonstrates or what some gimmick product or protocol promises. In the case of the latter, save your time and money. And in the case of the former, trust in the scientific process over solely someone's story time. Just keep training, dieting properly, sleeping well, and eventually, given time, all areas will lean out, including your trouble spots. We all have them. Though they will likely be the very last to go, and quite annoyingly so, I will add, uh, but just stick with it. This, of course, barring any health conditions uh, like those affecting hormone and metabolism. Um, if you feel you have an unusually hard time losing fat and you're doing everything correctly, and, and be honest with yourself here, consult with a qualified medical professional. Next question. I am not vegan yet. It's only been three weeks and I have been living a vegan lifestyle. Today, walking past a barbecue, I could smell the meat cooking and I still found it tempting. How do I steal my resolve? I don't actually understand the first part of your question. You said you've been living the vegan lifestyle for three weeks, but you're not vegan yet? Anyway, um, it may not be the smell of the meat itself that you miss, actually, uh, but likely the overall preparation, like the marinades, the salts, spices, etc., which all create, they all add to an aroma. My suggestion is for you to try, to try some of the vegan mock meats um, when the craving strikes, like those by Beyond Meat. Uh, the brand uh, that I will link in the video description below, and pre prepare them with your favorite barbecue sauce. Um, just be sure it's vegan, of course, as some barbecue sauces contain honey or fish ingredients, so always check labels. Uh, beyond this, just remember how that meat gets to your plate, and it will like you pu likely put you right the fuck 
off. I just love the Texas ribeye. You cook it just the way I like it. Yeah. Oh, I love that glaze. Next question. With bodybuilding as a vegan, would you recommend eating more calories versus an omnivorous diet? No. Eat the amount of calories you require for your body metabolism and goals. I apply the same eating quantities as a vegan that I did when I was a vegetarian, for instance. The only thing that I'd argue for keeping in the upper recommended range as a vegan would be uh, the protein macro, and only if your goals are strength, muscle building, or muscle maintenance. Uh, for instance, like bodybuilding, um, which is something you mentioned in the question. Just ensure you get at least two grams per kilogram of body weight per day of protein. As this appears to be a suggested minimum for vegan bodybuilders, according to the Food and Nutrition Board at the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. And that minimum falls right into the upper end recommended by the International Society of Sport Nutrition for Physically Active Individuals, which is 1.4 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight in protein. However, if you are deep into a cut, especially if you are pre-contest, and moreover, if you are drug-free, you may even consider higher, within the range of 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram of lean body mass, per this 2014 peer-reviewed paper. Next question. Also, what are some of your favorite tofu recipes that aren't adding too much oil? When I'm not using oils, I tend to cook with a spray. I tend to use a coconut-based cooking spray that I purchased from Whole Foods Market, and I generally saute my tofu with green veggies and sprinkle it with salt and spices, and I top it with some kind of a vegan sauce, macros depending, of course. Um, I prefer extra firm tofu and I love the Wildwood brand specifically. They produce products that are both sprouted and organic. They're soy products, that is. Next question, what are your thoughts on honey? Well, it isn't vegan, so I don't even consider it. It exploits bees. And bees are vital to our ecosystem. Use something else like maple syrup, agave, or sugar syrup of some kind. Hell, they even make vegan honey now, which I will link in the description below. Next question. What are your thoughts about the argument of bioavailability of animal proteins versus plant-based proteins? Well, to be honest, I don't give it much thought, and I do just fine. Uh, please refer back to the previous question about calories, where I elaborated on specific protein needs for physically active individuals. Worrying over protein bioavailability is ultimately mental masturbation, in my opinion. Just to ensure you're getting enough to uh, create a positive nitrogen balance. And given that there are recommended ranges, not one finite amount, explore the range. Pay attention to how you feel and perform and change. And find what works best for you within a given range for your given goals. For instance, some people find about 0.9 grams per pound uh, works fine for them, whereas I find higher amounts, upwards to 1.4 grams per pound, tend to work best for me. I just learned this through experimentation. I had tried lower amounts, I had tried somewhere in the middle, and, and points in between as well as the higher amounts, and I paid very close attention to how I progressed in the gym, how I looked, how I felt, etc. So it really is a very personal thing. Next question, what music do you listen to? Typically, I lift to metal of some variety. A lot of Nightwish, Camelot, Dream Theater, Within Temptation, and Threshold. I also listen to a lot of progressive rock like Pink Floyd, Porcupine Tree, Anathema, and Riverside. I also get a hankering for 80s hard rock at times, so you may find that I won't stop curling to Journey or repping like a hurricane to the Scorpions. Or even 80s pop like Duran Duran. Sometimes I'm just simply hungry like the wolf when I want a bench. Okay, I'll just stop with the puns there. You get the point. Last question. When are you going to settle down and have kids? <laughs> Never conceivably. Um, I've said it before and I will say it again. Properly raising children is a huge responsibility. An undertaking you need to commit to and plan for. You need to have a proper 
and have proper resources at your disposal, like but not limited to sufficient finances. Why bring a child into a situation where you know, you know going into it that you cannot provide the absolute best relative to said child? Uh, that would just be disgustingly selfish in my opinion. Uh, this is not going to sound politically correct uh, in the least, um, and uh, a lot of times I, I do say things and do address things in my videos that aren't very politically correct. But I'm going to point this, put this right out there. Some people should not be procreating, given their station in life. That's how I feel. Now, maybe they can provide love and care and even some basic necessities, but the child will still be likely left unoptimized in certain arenas, and thus wanting or needing. You know people I speak of. An example would be those who need to enlist in public support programs, for instance, to meet their child's needs, and in turn, create a burden for others by milking the system. Others who did not make that choice, this is where I'm specifying here, others who did not make that choice for them to have that child, or any future children they decide to pop out and bring into this dreadful scenario. So many people seem to have kids due to a blind biological urge, religious reasoning, uh, agendas of some sort, pure stupidity leading to accidents, um, or social conditioning, familiar or familial or peer pressures of some sort, or just because everyone else is doing it, perhaps a dash of missing foresight. Something that we're all guilty of sometimes. Um, some seem to view children, if subconsciously, as a way to add meaning to their otherwise mundane existences, and that is all very relative. And thus, we have a myriad of children being raised in less than savory conditions, possibly unwanted on some level, or by parents who are relatively absent from their children's lives physically, emotionally, or as respectable role models. So I understand this commitment, and thus, I decline. In my case, it's a matter of priorities. Um, what I can or what I am willing to put first, at least right now, uh, possibly for my entire life, I don't know yet. Um, I tend to take some things as they come. Having the intelligence and wisdom to make proper choices, specifically those that affect others, should not be understated. Um, it would be selfish of me to go into something that affects someone else, especially someone innocent who I helped create and thus I am responsible for, knowing that I cannot give my absolute all to it right now or possibly ever. So, nope. No plans to have children, and I'm not really the settling down type. Um, I'm always very, very busy. I'm moving about and very active. Um, hell, I don't even plan to retire, intentionally at least. Um, so I'll just settle down when I'm dead. Anyway, there you go. That about wraps it up. I had to leave some questions out, as always, uh, either due to time factors or because they're topics that I've covered before in some capacity. Um, so I hope this has been interesting and informative nonetheless, and I will see you all around next time. Don't forget to like and uh, share this video if you found it informative or you just enjoyed it, and definitely don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Take care.